Okay. Hey, just before we begin, do we have any speakers of the Bell Group Regional Corporation in action? Silvio. Okay. Great. Um, we'll wait just a few more minutes. Uh, I'm told that this session will end at 5.55, so we have 10 extra minutes. Okay, I guess we have reassembled. Uh, I hope you all have enjoyed your coffee break. Uh, we have three lectures, quite short, everyone. So uh, if we don't have time, you can keep uh, asking questions just uh, in the break letter. Uh, our first speaker is about missing Wikipedias. Uh, so I would like to welcome uh, Milos Rancic of the Language Committee. Thank you. So, uh, I'm Milos Ramcic, uh, and uh, uh, with me, uh, two other members of Language Committee were working on this uh, presentation. Those are Jon Harald Subi, his guy here, and uh, Robin Peppermans, his guy there. And of course, we are from the Language Committee. And for those who wanted to know what uh, does those characters mean? Here is the answer. Uh, we in Vice Library, key in Canadian Aboriginal syllabics, and the last two characters mean lang in Bengali script. So, uh, what's the project propose? Uh, most importantly, at the beginning, to map uh, missing Wikimedia projects. So it is not just about uh, Wikipedias, it is about all Wikimedia projects, although uh, if you are talking about languages, uh, Wikipedias, uh, up, to pr up to the present, uh, Wikipedias, uh, uh, every language had first Wikipedia than uh, any other project. So, first of all, we want to get general clue about the present situation, and we actually got it, and this uh, presentation is the product of uh, that general clue. Uh, then, we want to create a general recomm recommendations about, uh, about the needs, and to give it to Wikimedia Foundation and to the community. So some languages need just uh, Wikipedias. Uh, they have everything else and they just need someone to, uh, we need just someone uh, who would show to the speakers how to create Wikipedia. Uh, other languages uh, don't have fonts. Uh, other languages don't have Unicode standardization. Other languages don't even have writing systems and so on. Uh, <coughs> Uh, then we want to get a general picture about uh, particular countries and to uh, give it to the chapters. After that, we want to prepare for further work to create as many as possible particular descriptions, descriptions of social linguistic situations. That means just general, uh, 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 general uh, uh, 
information about a language. For example, how many speakers there are, uh, do they, uh, uh, which is the attitude of that speakers toward their native language, uh, do, do, are they bilingual or not, and with which language, and uh, do they have schools, uh, newspapers, radio, internet sites, and so on. Uh, and of course, we want to give it to, to the relevant Wikimedia bod bodies, most likely, in this case, chapters. Uh, then, we want to involve relevant persons and institutions, like universities, uh, uh, experts, and so on, and so on. And of course, to connect them to, uh, with the relevant Wikimedia bodies, like Wikimedia Foundation and chapters, and probably similar, some similar. And of course, we want to advocate need for covering more languages. Uh, so uh, how how we stay with uh, uh, how we stay now? Uh, this chart uh, logarithmi logarithmically uh, presents uh, uh, languages uh, uh, by a number of speakers. So at the left side uh, there are uh, languages with more than 100 million of speakers, uh, then one, uh, between 10 and 100, and so on. Uh, blue bars are uh, the full number of languages according to Ethnolog, uh, and red bars are uh, the uh, uh, languages uh, covered by Wikipedias or Wikimedia projects. So we can see that uh, we, we've covered all nine languages uh, with uh, above 100 million, uh, million of speakers. Uh, then we, we, we didn't cover, uh, we haven't covered uh, some languages uh, in the second group, and we are uh, worse and worse uh, uh, as we are going to, to, to the languages with more, uh, small and small, uh, smaller and smaller number of uh, uh, speakers. So if we look at this, uh, it is very, very bad situation. Uh, we can see very, very bad situation. However, at the other side, uh, this, is, uh, the, uh, this chart represents uh, a number of languages, a number of speakers uh, per, uh, which we've, we've covered, and uh, it is also about uh, the scale is also uh, x, uh, x, x axis is also about uh, group of groups of languages. So we can see that thanks to uh, thanks to the uh, biggest nine uh, biggest nine languages, we've covered 2.5 uh, billions of speakers. Uh, but however, we can see that there is some something like 400 and uh, more than 400 millions of uh, people who don't have uh, uh, Wikipedia in their language. Uh, their language is in the second group, more than 500 in the third group, around 300 in the, in the fourth group, and uh, much less in other groups. Uh, if we put that together, uh, uh, the situation looks like this. Uh, we've covered just 2.68% of languages. Uh, so we didn't cover, haven't covered 97% of languages. At the other side, we've covered uh, 77 percent of population over the population, but note that those 22 percent are around uh, one and a half billion of people who, who, who don't have Wikipedia in their native language. Uh, this is this is Bruegel's Tower, Tower of Babel, uh, Babel, and uh, whenever uh, uh, it, uh, someone speaks about. Uh, talks about uh, uh, multilingual issues, uh, and if uh, there is no better idea, this image is used as illustration. So I didn't have the better idea. And uh, the, the, the uh, a very important question when we, all, when, uh, we are talking about uh, issues like this one is, do we actually need a language diversity? And answers are, uh, uh, seemingly opposite. Uh, at one side, uh, interest of every human is to learn English because of economic prosperity, because of uh, getting information, and because of participation in global culture. Uh, all of that, you, for, for all of that, <coughs> your chances are much better if you know English. At the other side, interest of humanity is to preserve knowledge of and from languages. That means that uh, those languages have uh, uh, knowledge about local biodiversity, local uh, cultures, and uh, when we lose every, uh, every uh, uh, when we lose 
any language, we, we, we lose uh, such kind of information. And we don't have uh, information about uh, all uh, cultures and all, all biodiversity all over the world uh, yet covered. Then, uh, knowledge about languages themselves. Uh, every language have, uh, has uh, uh, different, uh, has, has uni some unique features which don't exist likely in other languages. And we, if, lo if we lose one language, uh, we lose insight into those features. And at, uh, presently, the most efficient way to preserve those knowledge uh, is uh, to preserve the languages them themselves as uh, living ones. Uh, we don't have uh, uh, other tools presently for, 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 for those goals. <sighs> and uh, so uh, the other question is, uh, which uh, I'm hearing from Wikimedia community uh, from uh, time to time, uh, why should we do that? Uh, is it, uh, it is not in side of our uh, mean, uh, mission or goals or something like that to preserve small languages. I would say that we should do that because we, talk, we can do that. We are, we are the only uh, network which is able to do that. There are no other, other networks which are, which, are, which are able to do that. And because we have historical liability because of the fact that we can, that. We can do that. Uh, so I will show you uh, one example how language diversity was in the past and how it is present, presently. In 15th century, Northern America looked like that, colorful. In 20th, 21st century, North America looks like this, like this, green. Uh, and uh, 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 note that every color or texture from the left side uh, present uh, a, a various la uh, different language group. Uh, one language group is, for example, Indo-European languages. Are in Indo-European languages? So English, French, uh, German, Russian, Persian, uh, Kurdish, uh, Hindi, and so on and so on. All of them belong to one group, Indo-European languages. There were almost 30 groups, 30 language groups in uh, those time uh, in 15th century uh, in North America. Now. Uh, just one dominant, and th th those in Canada, uh, I'll, I'll talk later. Uh, so, uh, green color at, at the right side represents English, in the European language, English, French, and Spanish. And most importantly, green stripes and squares uh, in, 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 in those areas uh, which actually covered, uh, which actually kept their languages. Uh, uh, represents that uh, speakers are bilingual. They, they speak also mostly English. Uh, this situation is similar to other parts of the world, like uh, Australia, uh, South America, uh, but also uh, not related to the classical colonialism like in the areas in uh, uh, former Soviet Union, uh, because of uh, Russian expansion from uh, a couple of centuries ago, uh, then uh, a, a couple of centuries earlier, uh, because of Arabic expansion, there are no uh, many Semitic languages from Mediterranean. Uh, and, uh, then a couple of centuries ago, uh, thanks to Qin expansion, uh, there are, uh, the whole China actually has 90% of uh, Han languages. So, uh, the question is, uh, after that, uh, what the future would bring uh, if the present and the past are so like that. So, I hope so that we will have. <laughs> so, uh, uh, relevant past, past predictions were not optimistic. Uh, I've heard for many predictions for 2020, 2050, 2100, uh, which were uh, talking about uh, the fact that just languages with more than one million millions of speaker, million speakers uh, would survive. Uh, we know that it is not true for 2020 already. Uh, the more contemporary predictions are talking are, are, talk, are speaking about uh, that language that thousands of languages uh, would uh, uh, die, will die. But at the other side, I would say that thousands will survive. Because 
new socio-economic situation. Uh, we, we don't live in industrial age anymore. We, we are much, we are, uh, uh, many people have uh, much more uh, to uh, eat, much more to, uh, much more time to spend on culture. Uh, enormously raised uh, level of communication. Uh, we, we can communicate with, with people around us, uh, with, with, with uh, 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 native speakers uh, of our native language uh, more easily. Uh, because we're machine translators. Uh, although we know that uh, uh, Google Translate and similar engines are very bad from the perspective of uh, uh, co correct translation, the point is that 20 years is very small time for uh, uh, language changes, but a very long time for machine translation, uh, ma machine translation development. Also, useful machine translators uh, lowers, lo lowers, uh, need, lower, uh, lowering the need for learning new languages. Uh, and, of course, because of us, because of Wikimedia. Uh, uh, those who, who, who want to preserve their language, they, they, they can have now uh, 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 online encyclopedia in their native language. Uh, it is not a big issue for us because we are living that, uh, that but it is the big issue uh, for any smaller language. Uh, uh, 11 years ago, it was not possible. Now it is possible. Uh, scattered language groups are able uh, to... Uh, 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 Okay. Scattered language groups are able uh, are able to collaborate widely on non project. This is very important for diaspora, and it is uh, uh, known that uh, uh, language groups, uh, th those smaller language groups which don't have uh, Wikipedia's yet, usually have uh, richer diaspora in in the Western countries. Uh, uh, we are proof that, that the world has changed since industrial age. Uh, the, 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 this meeting, the, uh, the fact that we are talking about this uh, here and now, uh, that's the true. That, that, that's, the, that's, the, uh, that's the proof. Uh, and also because we decided to uh, not just to create encyclopedia, but to build the movement, to go, uh, to make chapters, to go, uh, uh, in the uh, in the in other countries which don't have chapters and so on and so on, uh, we are helping uh, smaller communities. Some of us are doing some technical jobs for, like like uh, uh, helping them to fight vandalism, but some other people are actively uh, building, uh, helping them to build communities. That's very important also. Uh, uh, and in more, in more and more cases, uh, Wikipedia is the biggest encyclop encyclopedia uh, uh, in English language, in German language, and so on. But in many cases, Wikipedia is, the, is becoming the largest source of information uh, uh, for many languages. Many languages don't have bigger source of information, than, of contemporary information than Wikipedia. Uh, and by translating their articles, articles from uh, for example, English to their language, uh, they are uh, 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 modernizing their language so, so, so they can have new concepts, they're introducing new concepts in their native language and so on and so on and helping uh, that language to survive. Uh, so let's see the, 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 this chart again. At the uh, right side, there are 3,500 3, languages uh, with less than uh, uh, 10,000 speakers. Those languages are very in the, the endangered. Most of them won't survive. However, isolated languages like Papuan languages are, uh, are likely to survive uh, because uh, they don't have a lot of uh, connection with the outside world and uh, 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 very, very often uh, uh, communities with just 100 speakers are able to, or less are able to survive for many, many generations. Uh, and of course, a number of languages uh, in developed countries are, uh, we, we see their uh, revival. Uh, like, for example, uh, Celtic languages, Manx language died, uh, the last speaker died, and uh, uh, the, the other people uh, started to revive. 
uh, reliable language, and I think that there are uh, a couple of one or two thousands of uh, one or two thousands of speakers. Okay, not uh, native speakers, but speakers of monks. Uh, at the other side, there are 3,000 languages more which have chance to survive. Of course, uh, not all of them, small languages in developing and uh, underdeveloped countries uh, are under strong pressure. Uh, but uh, there is full sense to have Wikipedias in all of those languages. And we have just... Uh, I, I will continue then. So what can we do now? Uh, we can cover more languages. With 19 more languages, uh, those with more than 10 million of speakers, we would cover another 355 uh, million of uh, speakers. Uh, with uh, 19 languages uh, more, we would cover additional 128 million of speakers. And with uh, additional 100, 96, we would cover uh, 393 million of speakers. Uh, I, I will give to you a presentation if you want. Uh, th 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 that's not a problem. Uh, so you don't need to. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, next. Uh, that's, fortunately, we have much better options for Wikipedia to, for illustration than for languages. So, Leaving Wikimedia community is almost the ticket for language survival. That's, that, that's the very important issue, and we should be, uh, we, we, we should understand that, and that's our responsibility. Uh, because of that, we need to find creative ways how to create more Wikipedia communities. Wikimedia communities. Create infrastructure, find speakers of unsupported languages, find experts and show them how to create their own Wikipedias. Uh, and we are doing that now. Uh, okay. Conference will be held in 2012 in Indonesia. Uh, we will try to cover, uh, to call 70 representatives or 70 more, 70 Indonesian languages. Uh, I hope that we will have 50 more Wikipedias during 2013. Uh, for example, at the present situation, present rate, we, we had six new in 2007, 12, 2008, 7, 2009, and so on. And if successful, the concept uh, could be replicated all over the world. Just for the illustration, those are new languages from 2007 in the areas. Those are from 2008, 2009, 2010. 11, so the most of them are from Europe, and I want that in 2013, 14, 15, and 16. And of course, you're welcome to join us, do it personally, and do it on small scale, find speakers around you, and so on, teach them. I, I will give to you a presentation, or do it on large scale, and make large conferences. Uh, and, of course, advocate this inside of the Wikimedia community. And thanks to, I want to thank to Sebastian Moleski and Wikimedia Germany for helping us to have the first uh, real life meeting in Berlin this year. And to John Vanderberg and Wikimedia Australia, uh, who will likely to uh, fund the meeting in Indonesia. Thank you. I wish to thank Milos Rancic. Uh, again, our Q&A would be held, I uh, see a few questions, it would be held uh, after, after the session, during the break, uh, since we are a bit short of time. Again, we should extend the session about 10 minutes longer. Delphine Menach, uh, and she will speak about intercultural issues across Wikimedia projects. Stuck. So, um, for those who don't know me, I'll introduce myself very quickly. 
My name is Delphine Ménard, I'm French, and I'm typing well. <laughs> um, and I've been uh, yeah, going around Wikime Wikimedia for the past many years, let's put it that way. Um, I have been a board member of Wikimedia France, I've worked for the Wikimedia Foundation, and I am now a board member of Wikimedia Germany, uh, which makes it a bit complicated, but then, sorry. This is not working for a second, wait. Oh, here we go. Okay. Sorry. Wait there in a sec. My computer got I found my computer. So I'm going to talk about intercultural issues across Wikimedia projects. Um, it's a pet peeve of mine and, and something I uh, like to talk again and again about. Um, and I'm going to start with a disclaimer. Uh, this talk is Eurocentric. I'm a European. I speak only so many languages. It's superficial because there's a lot of stuff to talk about and I've only picked a few funny examples. It's caricatural, stereotype, and probably not politically correct and it's definitely POV. Um, <coughs> uh, I want to start with a definition. Uh, the idea is that uh, we're talking about culture, and culture uh, can be two things, or can be a, a broader thing than one thinks about. When, when one thinks culture, usually people think about international uh, culture with like the French culture, the Japanese culture, or whatever. Uh, there's a little more to that, and there can be <coughs> much more than just national cultures. <coughs> Sorry, there are... Um, uh, Anything that actually makes people different uh, can be part of the culture. It could be uh, genera generational culture, uh, it could be uh, social culture, many, many different things. So um, what I'm going to brush upon here is uh, a bit of everything. So my first question to you is, what is that? <laughs> Louder? So I have plane? Airplane? What? I didn't get that. A light aircraft driven by propellers? Well, according to the English Wikipedia, it's a fixed wing aircraft. Um, why did I take this example? Because I think it was a very interesting example of, um, I, mean, I, d I don't even know how I stumbled upon it. I just did. <laughs> and so I was like, OK, this is strange. Um, so this is just the example just to kick off the thing. And the thing that I want to talk about are three main topics that come again and again in uh, the intercultural issues that one can uh, observe on the Wikimedia projects. The first one is language. Uh, the second is cultural traits and the usage and cultural sensitivity. And the last one is politics and history. Um, I want to remind that the Wikimedia projects are language-based, um, which is uh, sometimes difficult for people to grasp because uh, how many times in the press of your country have you heard about, I don't know, I know in France we've had Wikipedia France uh, more, than, more than once. So this is something that people don't always understand that uh, uh, the Wikipedias are not country-based but they are uh, language-based, the projects are language-based, which kind of uh, gives a scope that's much bigger than just the country. Uh, this actually <laughs> um, makes it a parad uh, makes a uh, point out a paradox, uh, which is um, having one language and many people from different national backgrounds and social backgrounds, etc., participating in one language uh, actually both enforces differences because people stumble upon um, things that are out of their own circle, and at the same time it flats, flats, flattens them out because at some point. Uh, there has to be a consensus that, uh, that needs to be reached. And so people need to kind of maybe um, give up their convictions or their ideas on, on some things. Um, and uh, uh, Milos gave actually a quite a, a good example of this, how culture and identities are reinforced through the acknowledgement of, uh, the acknowledgement of, uh, of I can't say it already, <laughs> of languages. 
Um, and how important it is uh, uh, that those languages exist to help preserve a culture. But let's go back to my three topics. So the first one is language. And uh, I just picked two examples which I thought uh, were interesting. The first one I showed you uh, right about now. Actually, now I remember the fixed wing aircraft is the example that's given in the English Wikipedia manual of style as to uh, what the title of an article could be. Um, since apparently in the US, uh, a plane is actually an airplane, and in the UK, it's an aeroplane. Um, they decided that in the end it was going to be a fixed wing aircraft, which I must say as a second language English speaker I found very interesting because I would never ever look for a fixed wing aircraft anywhere to find, find out what a plane is. Um, so the manual of style, and, and I, I picked two because they have uh, they are built on the same on the same kind of ideas. I know that it differs in different Wikipedias. Uh, is the uh, English and the uh, Portuguese Wikipedia, where basically the rule is uh, whoever writes the article first gets to keep the title, um, unless unless the subject is very much tied to a particular language or a particular subset of the language. Which, for example, if you're going to talk about the Queen of England, then uh, you should be writing in British English, and if you're going to talk about George Bush, then you should be writing in American English. Um, so when I, that's what I say with a twist. But th these are rules that are written that exist. Um, another example that I picked out was in the, in the Portuguese Wikipedia. And I don't know yeah, if you see this. So this is quite interesting, because basically the question was whether I can't, okay, I'm going to butcher the, the Portuguese, please uh, shoot me. But um, it's Batalha de Stalingrado. And apparently in Portuguese, Portuguese, like in Portuguese from Portugal, it's Estalinegrado, I think. And it's Stalingrado in Brazilian Portuguese. So there was this huge war. You can see these are, these are the actual move logs from one side and the other. And this lasted something like six or eight months. <laughs> And it's still, if you look at the top page, which is enormous, you'll see that it's not finished yet. Um, so it's just something like what two letters or three letters can do um, is quite interesting to see how this language thing really kind of applies and comes in and, and, and kicks in. Uh, on the cultural traits and usage, cultural sensitivity, uh, the very big difference uh, in comparison to language is that there is no real enforceable rule in Wikipedia about how you go about um, taking care of those. Um, so I've chosen four very different examples. Um, the first one is not so much uh, an issue as such, but it's an interesting point of view, which is basically uh, what I call the bowl theory. And uh, I don't know how many different languages we have in this room, um, but if I say the word bowl, um, what do you see? I mean, what is the first usage you're going, no, not so much the, I think everyone agrees that this is a bowl. Uh, the question is, what do you put in a bowl? So, soup? Salad. Salad? Gold pieces. Sorry? Gold pieces. Gold pieces, okay, go pieces, okay. I put coffee, yeah. So um, basically, the idea is to say, um, you know, how, do, how does how does this work? Like, how do you have a word that's across uh, different Wikipedia's, um, and how does that actually translate into? So if we look at Collins, we can see. I'll just make it very very quick. This is the category of what a bowl can be, right? And if you look a bit closer, you'll have here a bowl with something in it. Here you have French fries, Stammtisch Ruhrgebiet. So that's a German <laughs> thing, right? Um, here you have the bowl of cereals is somewhere. I can't find it, but there's even a bowl with coffee. So the idea is what is that um, basically <coughs> across different Wikipedias, you're going to have an article that talks about the same thing, but that talks about the same thing in very different ways. In the French Wikipedia, you're definitely going to have that you use a bowl for breakfast to put your coffee in, which is kind of a weird thing. I mean, if you go to 
an English person and say, you know, uh, I want a bowl for my coffee. They're just going to look at you in a weird kind of way. This is not what you use a bowl for. And the Germans will say, wait, we put salad in a bowl, you know, as a primary. So the interesting thing here is that if you look at the articles, and I did look at the different articles, you'll see that the different articles in different languages are illustrated with different bowls. Uh, in the sense that it's, you know, there are some articles where you see always the same picture coming up at first, but in that thing, for example, you would have very, very different uses. And I think, I think it was in the Russian Wikipedia, if Google translates serves, where they said that a bowl, one of the function of a bowl was to actually put dog food in. Just to give you an example of, of everything that. One, o one other example, which <coughs> is part of the Wikipedia lamest edit wars, that was like a big source of inspiration for this talk. Is, is U2 an Irish band? I mean, seriously, like, is U2 an Irish band? So um, the, the, the whole question starts up with, in U2 there are two Irish people and two UK people, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not very good on this. But, so this was like a huge war um, about whether U2 should be tagged as an Irish band or not. Um, and maybe you can read it very well, but here, the, uh, that was, I just took an excerpt of the, of the discussion. <coughs> the discussion on, the, uh, on whether U2 is an Irish band or not uh, had actually 127, give or take, um, replies in the discussion on the, on, at this one point. Um, and it finally resolved as U2 are an Irish, oh, and the R is, is another, another uh, very interesting story. Um, you two are an Irish band and the opening sentence will change as follows. You two are an Irish rock band formed in Dublin. I won't tell you why it was resolved, but the, the interesting thing is that um, one of the th uh, things that I took up is like the underlying problem is the definition of Irish. And this guy goes on about explaining what the definition of Irish could be and things like this. So the, here, here we have this um, example of how the, the cultural sensitivity is like whether really we want to uh, recognize uh, U2 as an Irish band or not is probably a matter of whether you're Irish or not or Irish uh, uh, affiliated or not. But the thing is, sorry? Or if you like you too. Or if you like you too, exactly. Um, but the, the thing is, the first question about this started in 2006. And looking at the talk page today or two days ago, I found that an IP asked the question like two months ago, right? So this is a never ending story. So now they have a, an actual decision to say, you know, this is what we, the decision we made, but which means that this is actually something that people look at and react to. <clears throat> Another uh, very different uh, uh, story, <clears throat> the story of um, uh, Sedlmayr. Sedlmayr was a, was a German actor who was uh, murdered by two German people. I probably can't put this, this presentation with the names up when I'm sitting in Germany. That doesn't work. Um, and uh, German law um, says that when you have served your sentence in prison, your name cannot be tied to the events that, the Germans please correct me if I'm wrong here, but the, your name cannot be uh, put in public tied to the event that uh, had you put in prison, which means basically it's the right to start over, right? So um, the Wikimedia Foundation was actually served a legal notice uh, to take down the name of the murderers from the English Wikipedia. Um, and the, but the interesting thing here is that in the German Wikipedia, the conversation took place, but lasted maybe like nothing. It was really just, okay, this is the law, this is what we have to do, and then we're going to do it. The Wikipedia, the German Wikipedia serves mainly, uh, or, or at least in a, big, uh, in a big proportion, Germany, on which territory this is, uh, uh, this is forbidden, so we're not gonna put the names in it. And if you read the article, the article actually says, um, so in the year 1991, two men were taken by the police and it only refers as these people as two men, whereas the, the English Wikipedia, which also had the discussion about whether or not to take the names out, uh, decided to keep the names in, and the guys actually have an article uh, where their names and where they explain who, what they did and, and who they are. So here we have an interesting thing of where, in one Wikipedia, the actual local law, which is kind of integrated in the culture, 
kind of passes without any problems, whereas in other Wikipedias it just doesn't go through because the, the, the conversation went on about how come these guys served you know, time in prison, why can't we talk about them? And this is common knowledge and there are sources uh, around, around the internet and around the world where you can find this. And this is my personal favorite. This was a huge war in the French Wikipedia. It's kind of old, it's 2005, I think. But the thing is that today, in the article, you can still see, uh, still see it. And basically the question is whether an endive is called an endive or a chicon. Endive or chicon. In northern France and in Belgium, uh, the name is chicon, and in the rest of the world, but I'm probably POV when I say this, uh, it's actually endive. And so there was this huge war, you know, about whether the article should be called endive or chicon. And as you can see, and I put it on purpose uh, above, the redirect is from Chicon to Andive. So Andive won like the visible part. But if you actually read the article, not only do you have Andive and Chicon here, for example, for the, uh, for the picture, but throughout the article, they're actually never talking about Andive. It's actually talking about Chicon the whole time. So it's really strange, like you have this article that's called Andive and the rest of the article really kind of refers to, and you can see it here, um, when in a normal kind of uh, explanation what an Andive is, they actually talk about Chicon. So this was, this was like this kind of unresolved war that uh, made lots of people leave and everything. And um, an interesting thing is uh, I used this, this example uh, three years, four years ago in Wikimania, and here you still had Andive or Chicon uh, with their roots as a label for the image, which was exactly the same. So things also change, so pay people come back you know, and, and change a few things just like that. Um, in, then we have the topic politics and history. The po to, same thing as, uh, as cultural sensitivity, uh, the difficulty is that there is no real rule. I mean, okay, cite your sources, but sources are biased, and uh, NPOV is something very nice on the paper, but much more difficult uh, to actually uh, put in practice. So I took two examples, um, and uh, the Vipera Palestinae, I don't know how to say it. This. So the interesting thing about this is that this is uh, a viper that is found in the historical region known as Palestine. And this known as Palestine thing took like, that's how they made it to the lamest, the Wikipedia lamest edit wars. Uh, took forever to resolve whether it should be Palestine or occupied territory of Palestine. So, I, and, and the interesting thing here is that this has nothing to do with the actual politics of the thing, right? This is just viper. I mean, maybe it's, you know, maybe you love vipers and everything, but in the end, it's just an animal. And so this whole enormous, huge war about what should be in the article as to where this uh, viper comes from. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting uh, thing to look at when you think that politics can really show up in the weirdest places in Wikipedia. Um, and then I have Henry the Navigator and, uh, oh I forgot the picture. Um, and I've always take, taken this article uh, as an example because a friend of mine who, uh, who lives in, in Portugal said, you have to look at this article because it's very interesting and see uh, across three languages um, the question whether, you know, the, the first sentences of, a, of, a, of an article are also, also very kind of, give you a lot about what uh, the people think when they, when they, or wh which point of view people want to push when they write an article. Uh, so the question is, is he an important figure? Uh, it's very difficult to, to translate ein bedeutender Auftraggeber. Uh, but it's important, but not, in the, not exactly in the same way. I understand it at least just a bit differently. It's more someone who left a trace than important as such, but someone who left a trace. And uh, in, in Portuguese, it's the most important figure. And there is a very interesting thing is that if you, if you kind of look at the three articles, although they have changed a bit, but uh, on the English article, you have this huge uh, cite your sources notice. This is... Uh, uh, you ha you, we need more information. The German article is very factual, and the Portuguese article is more like about everything he did and how great it was and all this. So, like really across Wikipedia, as you'll find the very different way to handle information. Um, so, what is this 
teach us. Um, I just took like very, again, it's very small pieces and very small examples of something that could be actually very, very big. But the interesting thing in this is that collaboration is not always easy, especially when culture kicks in. And again, I left out the many um, discussions on sexism and other, uh, other kind of hard topics that uh, have people battling for uh, kilobytes on end. Um, uh, about you know what what should be there or not there in and then the, which phraseology to use and everything. Um, so what what I found interesting in in, in the, the examples that I give is that we find a few paths to uh, resolution. One is the compromise. I mean I, I really love the fixed wing aircraft. I think it's just you know it's just thank God for redirects red redirects because nobody would ever find that article otherwise. Um, so compromise is not exactly consensus. It is kind of consensus, but it's like nobody wants to give up. So um, uh, you find like a third way, a third path type thing. Uh, consensus is more okay. We try to find a, a way to make this work uh, uh, together. Um, you have this, for example, and for me, the, this, uh, this non-discussion uh, on the German Wikipedia, whether or not these people should be named, is a good way of how the consensus can find place very, uh, very quickly. Uh, the consensus is also U2 is a good example of at some point somewhat, some, something was decided it was not uh, one party or the other or maybe it was one party but sometime uh, it was something that was decided together. Um, you have the, the French example of Andy Vinchigon and uh, the Germans say it best when they say that Zwischen liegt die Wahrheit which is basically somewhere in the middle is the, tru the truth. Um, yeah, and so this Andiv Chicon article for me is a very good example of, yeah, we won't really choose, but you know, um, since there are like sensibilities about this, maybe we'll just kind of try to find a middle way. Um, and then in the in the the Battaglia de Stalingrado, um, the Brazilians won. Although the article was created as with the with the Portuguese uh, spelling, the the Portuguese at some point just gave up. And so that's is where a lot of this also happens that the strongest always wins, or actually in Wikipedia, probably the one with the most patience uh, would be my, uh, my thing. And then also where you revert to rules and guidelines and where you, you actually go back to the rules that exist or uh, change the rules that exist in, in the projects to actually make this uh, work. So that's the idea is that it could go back and forth. I mean, you're going to uh, enforce a rule that already exists, or you're going to maybe twist a rule uh, because it actually fits the situation, uh, but it becomes a rule. And that's also one of the way to resolve the conflict in intercultural issues uh, like this. But I think that uh, what it taught me anyway is that in the end, it's really a whole question of point of view and uh, how people with their baggage of uh, cultural sensitivity of cultural uh, history uh, actually go and think. I mean, I was thinking about you two, it's like, do we really care whether it's an Irish band or not? I mean, does it really keep us awake at night? And frankly, my answer to this is not, <laughs> is not no. So uh, it really is a question of, you know, how do you achieve this encyclopedic thing um, with uh, not giving into any point of view? And is it really, a neutral point of view to say this is a fixed wing aircraft. That's a question I'll put in the room. And I think that's it. So thank you to everyone who helped me find the, the little, it, especially Wikipedia lamest edit words. I mean, if you haven't seen that page, you really should read it. It's extremely funny. <laughs> and I love the, I think it was on the Vipera uh, Palestinia where, uh, at some point on the discussion page, there's some, some guy who says, congratulations, you've made it to the Wikipedia lamest edit wars. <laughs> and, it was, and I thought it was very funny. So thank you very much. I actually was quicker than my predecessors, so I have time for questions or remarks or...
Yeah, but okay. Uh, so the, the, the examples you, ga you gave, uh, you say, so the first thing was uh, there is a page with aircrafts where fixed wing aircraft is one of the types of aircraft, so that makes sense. Well, the, th the thing is, I think it doesn't. Because the fixed wing aircraft, when I landed on the page, I was like, where is my airplane? I mean, I seriously wondered, what is this page? You know, I have this Wikipedia page that says fixed wing aircraft, and I'm like, so, but I understand the need too. I'm just saying, as a, like a, a user, I'm like, okay, weird. The second uh, point you made was the Jello jelly thing, gelatin dessert. Actually, that works for me for some reason, because gelatin dessert is a very descriptive thing that I can't understand if I don't know Jello Jello jelly. Maybe it's just because airplane is a more common word or whatever. Um, but uh, you said another thing. Okay, that was it. Yeah. Comments? Um, like this, I need to go more to mention. There are some similar uh, things that take place even in inflection of the interfaces. Uh, in, uh, the interface of weak media to like when you said that several uh, forms like uh, what was the case. Yeah, so uh, he, the, the thing, w the remark was that there are also uh, very big battles about the translation of the interface of Wikipedia itself uh, between different languages, in this case, Portuguese, right? And uh, for the, so you mean like inconsistencies in the translation then? Like some, some word will be translated into Brazilian Portuguese and the, Just one comment uh, on the YouTube article. I have to say that uh, there is a notice that this article is written in, and I forgot the the word, but Irish English. I exactly, and so I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I would like to thank the Finn very much. And our last speakers, actually we have a panel about Ibergo Regional Cooperation in Action. I would like to welcome Oscar Valde Benito, Ivana Lishon, Galileo Vidoni, Castelo Blanco, and Ivana Alejandro Martinez. They are all from the Spanish and Portuguese speakers chapter. Hello. First of all, I want to introduce myself and my colleagues. My name is Ivana Liscom. I'm from Wikimedia Argentina. Um, he's Galileo Vidoni from Wikimedia Argentina too. Osmar Valdebenito from Wikimedia Chile. Uh, Castelo Blanco for, from the chapter 2B, Wikimedia Brazil. And Ivan Martinez from the, our newest chapter, uh -huh. uh, Wikimedia Mexico. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are here to talk about, uh, oh, another microphone. Our collaboration uh, initiative um, for Spanish and Portuguese speakers chapters. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, first, secondly, we love our logo, so here it is. It's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so we wanted uh, to show it uh, to you. Uh, Ivan did it, so talk about it. 
Yeah, the logo type of the initiative of Ibercop, it's an effort or a essay of uh, give the second um, step in the Wikimedia style, give a, an enhance of the Wikipedia or Wikimedia Project's logos. It's inspired in the cheerful and the colorful uh, of the American countries who are uh, involved in the initiative of Ibercop. I make, uh, I took the an element, the Enye, Spanish Enye and the, the and the chew of the Portuguese and uh, these co colorful elements are involving and only mission is the cooperation of Ibero America. Uh, America is uh, have had too many colors in in in, his, in in their countries and I want to express these vibrance in the in the logo type. This is the inspiration. Well, so we're going to talk a little bit about actually what is IberoCop or the Ibero-American Cooperation Initiative. Uh, as its name says, it is a cooperation group that puts together both chapters and working groups in Ibero-America. If you don't know, Ibero-America is a concept that groups together both Latin America, there is from the Rio Grande to the south, Mexico to, to Tierra del Fuego, and the two countries in the Iberian Peninsula, that is Spain and Portugal. First, in, yeah, the cooperation initiative start off as a mailing list. Now it is a series of mailing lists. We have a wiki as well and a section in Meta. And we ended up organizing uh, an Ibero-American summit, and we'll talk about it later. And why did we choose Ibero-America as our concept, as our territory, to organize cooperation between chapters. We believe that Ibero-America is a concept at a crossroads, and it was a useful crossroads for us, because it combined two different criteria that we could take to establish cooperation in our region. When we at Wikimedia Argentina started thinking about a cooperation agreement or a cooperation framework for our region, we found two possible ways to go. We could stress a socio-economical background, that is, countries that have similar HDI levels, similar ec economic models, similar demographics, and that would have led us to Latin American cooperation, perhaps, even with all of the differences that Latin American countries have between them. Or we could have taken a cultural background, that is, stressing the fact of having a common language and a common history, and that perhaps would have led us to uh, a league of Spanish-speaking working groups. But still, we couldn't accept, as, as Argentina, a cooperation framework that would exclude Brazil. And obviously, we couldn't exclude Spain. And if we add up to that, that Spanish and Portuguese have almost 91% of mutual intelligibility and can be written and spoken almost interchangeably, without any problem, we thought, well, then Ibero-America is the concept that best fits what we want to do, and the Ibero-American countries have enough in common to possibilitate uh, an active collaboration. Well, uh, as Ivan said, there's a lot of differences, and a lot of colors in Ibero-America. Uh, there are a lot of conflicts uh, in the past, there's a lot of conflict even in Wikipedia. As Delphine said, you lost a lot of opportunities in Spanish Wikipedia. Uh, but in the end, we have a common history between the countries in South America, with, in Latin America in general. We have a common culture. Every day we speak the same language, we have the same music, we play the same football, uh, and we are in the same community in Wikipedia. We have the common, a common language. As Galileo said, we can uh, understand each other uh, reasonably very well in our native languages. Spanish and Portuguese are two of the main, uh, of the largest uh, languages in the world. Se uh, Spanish is the second uh, language with most number of uh, native speakers, and Portuguese is the seventh. In the Wikipedia movement, in the, in the Wikipedia project, the Spanish uh, version is the fourth with the largest number of visitors every week, every hour and Portuguese is the eight. In the number of articles, we're not that good, but we have uh, the seventh, the, the, the sixth, 
and the ninth largest Wikipedia. And what's wrong? This was mine. Okay, when the idea of the initiative of collaboration first uh, began. Uh, Appear, <laughs> the, develop. That was last year on on Wikimedia 2010. There were only three uh, chapters, um, Spanish and, Portu uh, and Portuguese speakers um, chapters. There were Argentina, Italy, and Portugal. We know Italy Why is not. Italy? <laughs> <laughs> we know Italy is not strictly an Ibero-American country, but uh, when we, <laughs> it's, it's not, we know it's not, but we, when we had a, a meeting uh, in the last year with Minia, there were the Italians guys, and they were really willing to, to collaborate with us, and we found it great, we found it great so. <laughs> Besides Italian, and Italian is also similar with Spanish and Portuguese, so they can, we can read Italian. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can read Italian. I can't speak Italian. But I can read. <laughs> well, <laughs> what? We. <laughs> She's the boss. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, since then, uh, Spain, Chile, and Mexico got approved, and we were we are working too with groups of people from Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Uruguay, and Venezuela. And we couldn't find any, any other groups from other countries. So I think that this, uh, these are uh, the groups from all the Spanish uh, regions that are working effectively now, of course. <laughs> Not all of these groups were present from the very beginning. No. The, the Colombian group was stagnant since two years ago. The Venezuelan group was an impossible mission since years and years ago. Five or six uh, years. Bolivia was uh, one, one man's will. <laughs> uh, but hopefully this start working over time. Uh, let's pass the slide. OK. Um. OK. Uh, how did it start? Uh, when the Argentinian group was working hard for Wikimedia 2009 in Buenos Aires, uh, they approached to all the people from the Spanish Wikipedia mainly to have a meeting of uh, the people who uh, had all this relationship in the, in the project, who speak the same language and also was in this language words about uh, Mouse Raton or other, other stuff. And we had this first meeting of international Spanish speakers in the obelisk of Buenos Aires. Uh, after this meeting, we started to uh, strengthen the relationship between the different groups that were working towards a chapter. And, and finally, in Wikimedia 2010 in Dansk, we uh, created this initiative as IberoCop with the idea of hosting a, a meeting this year in Buenos Aires to, to develop more the idea, the initiative. What, we have, what have we done till these days? First one, we had uh, the opportunity to uh, work with the, with the Fundación Telefónica, which is the uh, charitable, charitable organization of Telefónica, one of the largest tel telecom uh, companies in the world. They had a project to uh, a contest for teachers in Iberoamerica uh, uh, for, inno for innovative teachers. Uh, so they uh, asked us to uh, answer questions of teachers about Wikipedia and all other kind of wikis. So we organized and we, sent, we put some uh, oh, two or three guys from each chapter uh, answering by Twitter uh, the answers uh, of the different of teachers around all the Spanish-speaking world. Uh, also, uh, all the chapters, uh, the established chapters, helped the foundation of uh, the work of the working groups, especially Chile and Mexico and all the others, uh, answering the questions we all had at the moment of foundation: what we have to do, where, uh, with whom we need to talk. 
because uh, all of them had already had the experience of founding a chapter, and we can have these questions in Spanish or the young languages, which were most more easy, uh, which was easier, and we didn't have the any kind of doubts. Also, there was a similar problems and similar uh, opportunities for the chapters because we had a lot of uh, common uh, common things. For example, the bylaws of uh, Wikimedia Chile were, ba were had a, as, a, as a base the bylaws of Wikimedia Argentina because they were similar legislations. Mujeres Iberoamericanas, which means Iberoamerican women, was a contest that was hosted, uh, that was created by Wikimedia Argentina for Wikipedia 10. Uh, after a huge debate in the Spanish Wikipedia, uh, Wikimedia Argentina decided to expand the project not only to Argentinian women, women who didn't have uh, an article, important women from Argentina, but also to women from all the continent. And in this, in this project, all the uh, organizations that uh, are part of IberoCop, we encouraged our members or our communities to take part of the contest and also to, for, uh, for example, listing the main uh, articles that we wanted to have in the contest. And finally, the IberoCop Summit, summit who was hosted by With Me Argentina uh, past June. Well, so this is our group photo. The Ibero-American Summit was held in June in Buenos Aires, as Omar said. And what's interesting for us is that it was held entirely in Spanish and Portuguese. And you could speak either in Spanish or in Portuguese, and it would be OK. There was no English at all in our summit. And we believe it is important to stress this, because it permitted, it enabled people who would have never been able to express themselves in English to actually participate and take part in a, in a global Wikimedia event. Even if we happen to speak, <laughs> even if we happen to speak our crappy English, we are not able to express ourselves as we would like to. If we want, we can speak for hours in Spanish about this. You haven't noticed yet. <laughs> uh, and we are privileged ones. There are people who are doing amazing things in their countries and who have working groups set and running and who happen to have the disgrace not to be able to speak English. So they are completely invisible to most of the international Wikimedia community. And having this event in Spanish and Portuguese enabled themselves to participate, to inform themselves, and to strengthen the formation of their working groups and chapters. Because, we haven't said this before, uh, IberoCop is perhaps a two-level thing. On a, on a low level, it aims at fostering the development of the Wikimedia movement in Ibero-America, and particularly in Latin America by sharing experiences, identifying potential working groups, and trying to empower themselves by empowering ourselves. This is why one track of the Ibero-American Summit was explicitly focused at issues having to do with forming a working group or a potential chapter. Questions of founding, of press relations, of dealing with internal communications, etc. Uh, and there was another track that was explicitly oriented on what we could do together in the future. Uh, common projects having to do with heritage, we'll co talk about this later, with educational outreach, with a, an integrated press team, etc. We even have some, we will have some talks with education specialists there. I think that the, the summit went really well. We were expecting SJ from the foundation to be there, but unfortunately volcanoes are enemies of Wikimedia. <laughs> so he couldn't come. Uh, oh, and I should say that we are very grateful to the foundation for uh, funding their travels and Wikimedia Argentina was responsible for all of the local part of accommodation, venue, etc. No. Okay, uh, as Galileo said, uh, there was a lot of uh, final outcomes of this particular event. Uh, there was a declaration that was approved unanimously for, uh, for, the, six, for the seven, by the seven uh, groups. And so here are the main things that we had. Uh, first, an heritage contest, and an idea similar to Wiki Love Monuments. But we want to do something for something new, uh, adapted to the Latin American and uh, Ibero American situation. We want first, uh, we don't want to uh, give another burden to the chapters that are uh, organizing first. Uh, this is their pri priority. So we want to uh, 
we were thinking about ha having a single contest organized between all the six chapters instead of seven uh, instead of 17 different uh, working groups that as in Europe also we don't have the same number of monuments than, than Europe we only have around 500 years so <laughs> Uh, and also, we don't. In, not in all the countries have this. We have the same num, uh, same kind of organization or a common uh, catalog. a catalog of all the monuments. So we were thinking maybe something more about uh, the reality about Latin America. Uh, we had a, a huge number of traditions, of cultures, uh, and also about our land. So we, we were thinking maybe about the natural heritage and also the cultural heritage. Focus on that. And uh, we already have a working group on this, so we hope to we hope to have uh, the results for next year. Uh, also, we'll speak almost the same language, but every time that something happens, we have a, a press release for every country, which makes, which says the same but with different words, and we all have to work to create that release. So we started with a press court. Uh, we thought about coordinating the press releases to uh, send just one or, or uh, write just one instead of six different, for example, and also translating to the Spanish the principal... Uh, and Portuguese? And, and Portuguese, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the main uh, press releases of the foundation. Educational efforts for us uh, in Latin America, the education is one of the main, uh, the main things. Uh, is uh, so we, as uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia organizations, we want to collaborate with this. Uh, for example, there are a lot of initiatives that we could localize in the different countries. The main one was uh, Wikipedia in the aula, Wikipedia in the classroom, that was created by Wikimedia Argentina. And uh, we are already having talks in Chile to localize and distribute the, distribute the, booklet. the booklet to Chilean teachers. And also to adapt uh, or uh, make some kind of uh, combination between Wikipedia and also different, uh, how, how we can uh, mix or collaborate? Well, it's in Well, okay. <laughs> uh, how we can use Wikipedia with the national syllabus of, every, of each country. So we, the teachers and the students could approach in a better way to Wikipedia. Uh, we also want to uh, improve and, uh, and foster the development of the indigenous languages. Until this moment, there are some uh, projects in, in languages like Aymara or Guarani, but also there are huge languages without, uh, without a project like Mapudungo in Chile. So most of them were, are in two or three, or three countries, so we can combine the efforts of uh, all the chapters for uh, be better projects. And finally, uh, because our, uh, our summit was so successful and fun, uh, we decided to host it every year so we can improve every year the movement in Latin America and Spain and Portugal. OK, so these are the conclusions of our summit, not of this short talk, of course. Uh, we believe that regional cooperation is best served by a shared background, and we believe that the success of our Ibero-American cooperation initiative is best explained by the way of having a common set of traditions, a legal tradition, uh, a, a similar culture, a similar language. So this is what possibilitates collaboration more so than just geography. We could have made a Pan-American initiative uh, encompassing Canada, the US, and Latin America, and I don't see too much sense in that. Because we would have, to start with, we would have ended up speaking in English. That is exactly what we want to avoid. Uh, and we believe that this, this way of organization enables self-empowerment in the sense of sharing experiences together in our own way, in our own place, in our own languages, and in that way making the movement stronger in our region. We believe that regional cooperation is the right antidote for paternalism or any that you could name a paternalist approach or patronizing, if you prefer. Because regional cooperation takes into account regional, 
particularities, regional realities, and different realities. If there is something that characterizes the third world, it is, uh, sorry, I lost the word, um, heterogeneity, yeah. So you can take the third world as a unified thing, as a unified concept, because that, would let, that will lead us to wrong results. Wrong premises lead to bad results, and that is where we believe that this is working, and perhaps other approaches didn't work. So don't look only at the geography book when thinking about defining collaboration or defining different groups or regions within the Wikimedia movement or even within the, the world. Read the history one too to find similar places where there is a shared culture, a shared language, a shared background in any sense that can really make collaboration between those people easier than it would be between two strangers. And finally, Every time someone says Global South, a kitten dies. <laughs> this, uh, this one was one of the uh, most important subjects in the meeting. Uh, Global South is just a softly way to say third world. And that's out, it's an outdated and patronizing term. Uh, it's just taking the map in the 15th century and put the European countries up and all the other good savages in the south. And, and we don't think that it, it's a good way to approach to the, to the people from uh, Iber America, or also Africa, Southeast Asia, and other places. Uh, the Global South, we, we know it's, it's hard to say uh, a good, there, there is no way to, uh, there is no, there's no good way to, to call it but uh, we think that we could use the term developing nations, which are accepted by the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the American States Union, the African Union, and all other international organizations. Because developing, at least, it's dynamic. We're moving towards something. And that's what we suppose we are doing, in, at least in our countries. Global South is just static and permanent. Yeah, it's completely weird. <laughs> So that was our presentation. Gracias, obrigado, toda, shukran, thanks, and in every language you can use. Thank you. Well, hopefully no kittens will harm during the last talk. Uh, I want to thank the panel. Uh, we have a very short break now. Uh, so we have about five minutes until the next session begins. Uh, so if you have any questions about the first talk or the uh, um, Ibero-American cooperation, uh, now it's the time to ask. Okay, no questions. Everyone dismissed. Uh, no more English for us. No more English for us. We would like to open it, but in fact, there were some chapter representatives who wanted it to be closed for privacy reasons, and we thought it was okay like that. If all of the documentation. Yes. No, I, I am I am com I am completely in favor of making it open. Uh, with, with some reservations, but I'm in favor. Uh, yeah, talking about transparency, all of the documentation of the Ibero-American Summit, even the tachygraphical transcriptions, are online here at cor.to, cor.to, slash, she, j, w. There's another one. <laughs> Where is it going to take place or when? Where? Where? We have not defined yet. We would like to have a rotating criteria. And there are some offers from... Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Portuguese offer themselves. There was an offer in Rio de Janeiro, but we want it in 2014. And 2016. 2016. <laughs> 